It was an ordinary day. He was working as usual, unaware of what she was planning. He was stacking shells while she was digging around in her car looking for something. She had tossed it aside the last time she used it, so she was unaware of where it could have ended up. She had a conniving smile on her face at the thought of her evil plan. Michael Sam owned a general store and all of the responsibilities that came with it. The store was in the middle of nowhere where people from all corners came to shop. He loved meeting new and intriguing people while on the job. He never knew who would walk through that door, especially on a day like any other. She knew she had to wear a mask. It was just the store policy and many people understood why. It shouldn't have been a big deal, but it was. Like any other normal day, Michael stocked all of the shelves and helping customers until she came walking through the door. He heard the door open and looked over to see a woman reading the no mask, no service sign. She then looked at the other customers in the store. She froze up, as if looking for something. Then they made eye contact, and Michael had a gut feeling things were going to get complicated. She made sure Michael saw her before she walked more into the store. She didn't have a mask on as she flashed a wide smile his way. Michael calmly walked around the corner and went towards her. He really didn't want any trouble, but she would make sure it came his way. Michael approached her and smiled. I'm sorry, ma'am, but you'll have to put a mask on if you want to shop here. She looked at him and replied with an attitude, No, I don't. She pulled the right to breathe card as Michael just shook his head. Her tantrum was far from over. He gave her an ultimatum, get a mask or get out. She went off the rails again, giving him a piece of her mind. Michael could just listen to the abuse before his patients started leaving him. She then suddenly stopped her tirade and smiled. Michael could tell that things were going exactly as she planned. She wanted to be kicked out. After she left, Michael could breathe again. He was thankful that things hadn't ended any other way. Anti-maskers only ever caused him and his store trouble. The woman left his head as he kept working. But he'd been on her mind. She was going to come back with a vengeance. She was in her car in front of the store searching for something. Michael was unaware of this and went about cleaning and packing shelves, but she would stop at nothing to get her way. She couldn't remember where she'd put it. She had hurriedly put it away after using it the last time. She kept checking the parking lot to make sure no one notices what she's doing. Alas, she finds it and waits. She waits until she sees him roll up in his beat up truck. He pulls up beside her and gets in her car. Have you got it? He asks. It's right here, she says. She admires his attire as she giggles with delight. Now all that's left to do is go back into the store and give her offender a moment he'll never forget. Michael is surprised to see her burst back through the doors. This time she has a mask on, but it's not any kind of mask. It's a very, very particular one. Enraged at what she's wearing, Michael tells her to get out immediately. I have a mask on, she shouts back, but Michael is adamant. She screams insults at him as she calls for the man waiting outside to come in. Her husband walked through the door, chest puffed, chin up. He's dressed in an officer's uniform. He's come to defend his wife, who's wearing a mask with a Nazi symbol on it. Michael watches as he squares up to him. He looks sternly into Michael's eyes, his face already red with anger. Suddenly, Michael's taken aback. Did he do something illegal? This lady tells me you're breaching her right to freedom. If this can't be resolved, you're going to have to come with me, the officer said. What? No, Michael said, confused. He rushed to explain the situation, but soon he smelt something fishy. The officer kept threatening him, so Michael asked to see his badge. Then it went from bad to worse. Michael realized he'd never seen this officer before, and this was a small, remote town, so he had a feeling something wasn't right. Who was this guy? Michael asked him for a badge. The officer, reluctantly yet confidently, took it out and showed it to him. Michael's confusion erupted into disbelief and laughter. Why? Get out of my store, man. Both of you. Out. Now, he said. The badge was fake. He wasn't an officer and the woman next to him was still wearing a Nazi mask. You know what? You can easily get arrested for this, so both of you either get out now or I'm calling the cops right now, he threatened. She leaves with her husband following suit. Don't ever set foot in this store again, Michael called after them. Michael's store is the only one in close proximity to the anti-masker couple's home, so now they have to drive an hour to the next town over anytime they want basic groceries like milk or bread. It was a burden they simply couldn't bear, so they soon came back to Michael's store. 
but this time something changed. Michael was helping a customer pack her items when he saw them enter his store again. He finished helping the woman, grabbed his phone, and marched towards them. Didn't I tell you both to get out of here, he stated? She was wearing the Nazi mask again. Her husband wasn't wearing any. Michael sent them out straight away, but now they swore to take personal revenge on Michael. At first, everything seemed normal. His week continued as usual, but then he started to think more about the couple that threatened to get revenge. He started to worry, and for good reason. The store was too small to sneak past Michael and buy groceries, so the desperate couple decided to take matters into their own hands. First, they needed to know his routine, so they started to appear at the remotely situated store, just out of sight enough so that Michael wouldn't notice. He was completely oblivious that he was being watched. They stalked him for days. They knew what car Michael drove, what time he opened up, and what time he closed up. What were they up to? Michael told himself not to worry about the revenge threats. He consoled himself by reasoning that he hadn't seen them in days, so they probably just said that to scare him. The threats were empty, but he was wrong. It was another beautiful sunny day. The skies were blue and the temperature was just the perfect amount of warm with a cool breeze. Nothing could put a damper on Michael's good mood. He drove to his store, singing along to the radio as he drove down the empty road. But he was driving straight towards a sharp pin that would burst the happy bubble he was in instantly. It wasn't long before Michael realized there was a truck behind him. In fact, it was a truck he saw a lot of recently. When he pulled into his store and parked the car, there was a car already waiting there. That never happened this early, so Michael thought it particularly odd. When the truck that was behind him pulled up, Michael knew something was wrong. It was the anti-masker couple. They had come in separate cars. They were cornering him. They stalked him to make sure this was a quiet time for Michael. No witnesses. But what they failed to realize was that Michael was a big guy. He was also trained in mixed martial arts. He knew how to defend himself and he was a hard guy to intimidate. He quickly dialed 911 and spoke into the phone while he raced to the back of the couple's car. Making sure they heard him, he loudly spoke as he reported their car registrations and threatening behavior. Michael later posted his story to Reddit and got an outpour of support and admiration for how he handled that situation. Remaining calm and firm in a situation where you were dealing with angry and unstable people is definitely a trait worth celebrating, and people made sure to let him know he was right. One user wrote, She was trying to push every button the shop owner had because people like Karen want to own the libs any way they can. It's pathetic. While another wrote, Hell yes, dude. I hate stories where corporate rolls over because they need the business. I could never see myself serving some Nazi regalia wearing moron. I wish everyone was as empowered slash willing to do this as you.